it's Kim here. I'm with Eat Nova Academy, and we're going to go through our critical thinking skills class. Now, a lot of critical thinking skills classes are just presentation classes in other groups, and we love presentation, and presentation is important. But we know that we can teach your child the keys of presentation in just a couple of weeks. Really, how hard is it? Your child just has to stand up before their group, and if they have problems with that, we do help them out. And they have to have eye contact, and they have to speak clearly, and they have to speak loudly enough. And literally, almost every child can do that in just a few weeks with the encouragement that we give them. So what are we trying to accomplish in our critical thinking skills class? That's an excellent question. What we're trying to do is teach our children to speak from the heart. So first thing that we do, presentation, speaking clearly, all of that, that's number one. Number two is speaking from the heart. So they have their timeline cards, they have our circles on the back, and we're hoping that they just speak from the circles. So no reading, moms. Don't write out a dissertation for them to read because really you're not gonna have a teleprompter with your child every place they go. And when you speak from the heart, you don't read. So my favorite story about this is Martin Luther King Jr. He was standing at the Lincoln Memorial. He had this huge crowd out in front of him. And he started speaking from a prepared speech that educated speech writers had written. And that was where he had points in that. It was going to touch his audience. It was going to be perfect. And everyone had agreed. And it was a consensus agreement. And so he started to read it. But there was a woman who had just sung a gospel song. And she was sitting on the podium near him at his feet. And when he started reading, she called out, Mahela Johnson called out, Tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him about the dream. So she interrupted him in front of all these hundreds of thousands of people and people on television and whatnot. And, and he stopped. And so he started by saying, I have a dream. And his dream changed our nation. And that was him speaking from his heart. And that's what I want your children to do. I want your children to change our nation by speaking from their heart. So don't write out a long dissertation for them. Just have them do one or two sentences and then fill in a few of those circles. And remember to keep it short. Keep what you're, they're speaking about short. And so that's our next thing. Let's define what they're speaking about. So if they're speaking about an event, the dates might be important. It's important to know that the Civil War was from 1860 to 1865, but do they really need to know the exact date that it started and the exact date that it, it ended? Probably not, or the day someone was born, the day someone ended. Maybe we can just say they were in this century or in this time period. What we wanna know is where does it touch your heart? So for example, if they're talking about Winston Churchill, we want them to talk about maybe Dunkirk and how he got on the radio and he said, get out there, get your boats. Whoever you are, if you're a grandfather or grandmother or a young child, well, not too young, but get out there and get your boats and go to Dunkirk and rescue these 300,000 men and how the people did it. And they rescued so many hundreds of thousands of men. And that's what we want them to talk about. We want them to talk about it with passion. So that's number two, or number three. So make sure that it's condensed to something that's important. Now remember, your child may not get everything that's important about the event or the person, but that's where a round table discussion comes in. So round table discussion. Round table discussion is using the, the the practices that I learned when I was in the business world. And I had to give presentations all the time to, to a vast number of people in different meetings. And this is where it's really key. Because if you're marketing to someone or if you're telling someone what you want to provide for them or what you think is the right thing to do in your business situation, you want to capture them. You don't want them to be on their iPhones doing something else. So in the round table discussions, your child, after talking about one aspect, will say, does anyone have any questions or add-ons? So the students will raise their hand and do, I have a question or I have an add-on. Now this sign language helps the person who's presenting to kind of, kind of process before they say something. So they might say, well, Nathan, what is your add-on? And Nathan might say, well, I studied about Winston Churchill too, and what I studied about was the Blitz, or the bombing of London. And Winston Churchill did this in the bombing of London. So then another child might want to add on to the Blitz. And so the person standing up just points to the next child. So they are the leader of the discussion. 
don't jump in, moms, and start leading the discussion for them. Help them to lead the discussion. This is very important in the roundtable discussion part because it, sh it gives the person who's presenting that leadership and it also shows them those key aspects of leadership. So after each add-on or question, they're to say, great job, Nathan, or thank you, Anna, for presenting that or for speaking about that. So they're then the teacher, they're the authority in the room for that minute. So the next point is that in order to do those great roundtable discussions where you're really getting a lot of information flowing, the children need to come to class prepared. So that's our next point. Your students will feel left out and they'll feel bored if they're not in class and they haven't done some of the work ahead of time. Now, I'm not saying spending hours and hours and going to the library and reading books. That's super good and we would love that. But if they could just spend the hour it takes to watch the videos each week and do their three timeline cards, it will make it a better experience for every child at Eden Hope Academy. So I really ask you to get your children have them prepared for class so that everyone is better. Final point is that we want to make sure that our students apply the Bible to everything that we do. So if you could try to work with your child on a Bible verse for his card, remember he or she may not present every single week. During the roundtable discussion is a great time to bring up that special Bible verse as well. So if you can think of something like, for example, the wall of Berlin coming down and the wall of Jericho coming down or something like that so that your child can be prompted. You know, we can talk about walls and how God brings them down or something like that. That is so important because we're trying to make it where the Bible is so integrated in your children's lives that that's their go-to place for any problem or concern. So my goal is that your child will have, will be in a situation or be in many situations in their lifetime where they're asked to speak just like that. Like maybe the pastor has a sore throat and they're an elder and so they say, no problem pastor, I can preach today. I know the Lord has put a sermon onto my heart and they can just go up there and preach. Or maybe they'll be asked to speak in a meeting that they weren't expecting to speak at. We want them to have such self-confidence that they can go up there and just nail it. So that's our goal at Eden Hope Academy is to prepare your child for the future. And we are so glad you're part of it. We've added on a little clip of some of our students um, doing the, the um, presentation, the roundtable discussions like we love for them to do. So watch it and realize these are some of our younger students. We'll post some of our older ones on Facebook as well. But just enjoy seeing them do the roundtable discussion and watch how great they do. Thanks so much and I'll see you in a little bit.